Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, so for starters, this happened in July of this year and it still freaks me out. I am currently 24 and 23 when it happened and it was a hot afternoon and I was going home from my boyfriend's house who lives about a 15 to 20 minute walk from my home. Since it was a scorching heat, I was wearing bike shorts and an oversized tee and sneakers. And as I was getting about 10 minutes away from my home, I put my headphones on and I decided not to rush as I didn't want to get there just yet because I was enjoying the fresh air. As I'm going across the street, a man in a truck, who was also across the street, began catcalling me and I just ignored him. And I just waited for the light to change. But as I waited, he began getting increasingly more aggressive and overall just wouldn't shut up. The light changes and I make my way across, but he then proceeds to honk his horn as I'm walking by and then he says, Hey, I'm talking to you. Why don't you come with me for the night and I'll treat you real good. And I immediately told him to leave me alone and I continued on my way. But as I am walking, he begins following me in his car and keeps trying to get me to go with him. I call my boyfriend and I tell him the situation and he FaceTimes me to see the car and the person following me. He then tells me to go in a store and stay there. I do as he says, but not even two minutes after I walk in, the man walks in and he was looking for me. He spots me and I immediately go to the person behind the counter and then tell her the situation and she offers to let me in the back and call the police. I told her yes and then I waited. He walked up and asked the lady if she had seen someone with my description and she immediately says no, and if he's not going to buy anything, just to please leave as she had customers. He begins huffing and puffing that he knows that she saw me, and once again she says to leave, and that if he doesn't, she will call the police. Well, that got him, and so he left. About five minutes later, my boyfriend arrives and tells me that he's going to take me back to his, as he feels that it's safer. I don't really argue, and then we leave the store. As we walk out, the man is there, and then he looks at us and said, Oh, so you're just a tease with a boyfriend. <laughs> Typical. And my boyfriend immediately goes into protective mode and gets in his face and tells him, If I ever see you again, if you even breathe in her direction again, you'll regret it. And he then proceeds to punch the man in the groin and walks me back to his house. Sometimes, I really hate being a woman. I'm an American currently living in Japan for a few months while well, my husband works here. I was in a shoe store at a mall all by myself, and this guy came up to me and asked how I was doing. By the tone, I could tell his intentions were gross, so I ignored, and I was going to pretend that I didn't speak English. He persisted and kept asking and asked what my name was. I ended up telling him that I was fine and told him my name, which I regret. Just my first name, though and he didn't tell me his. He asked if I was alone. Ew, I knew it was probably bad news when he asked that. I said no, that I'm with my husband. He looked around and said, I don't see anyone. Are you lying to me? Then I said, No, he's around. Genuinely scared at this point, but I didn't want to make it obvious. I walked to the other side of the store 
and I pretended to look at shoes. I saw him still on the other side of the store staring at me. He wasn't even trying to make it subtle. He was just standing with his hands in his pockets, looking right at me. And then I noticed, when I move, he would move and never stop looking at me. So, I stood near a group of girls in the store and looked back and he had turned around and I booked it out of the store. I was on the fifth floor and I ran down the escalator to the third one and I stopped myself thinking that maybe I should act less panic, maybe I should act like I'm not bothered. And then after a little while, I saw him on the same floor looking right at me and walking right at me again. That's when I went into flight mode, and I got the hell out of the mall, doing full 360s just to make sure that he wasn't around, and I didn't see him again. I know when you're being followed that you're not supposed to go straight home, so I went to another mall, and I stayed there for about an hour, the whole time being super aware of my surroundings, and I didn't see him after leaving the first mall. I called my husband to let him know, and I described the guy to him. Apparently, it's a thing over here that this type of guy that was following me usually tries to kind of recruit girls to bring back to clubs to attract guys in prostitution ties in with it. Apologies if I sound naive, because I am. I don't really know anything about this stuff. I am so grateful that nothing actually happened but I am still freaked out and by the thought of what could have happened. I am confident that he didn't follow me out of the first mall, but I am still really scared and I am not planning on going out by myself anytime soon. I feel like I should clear up this detail for context. It was a Nigerian man that was following me and I guess it's a thing over here that a lot of Nigerian men try to get girls for some of the things that I said above. Again, I apologize for being naive. I'm totally new to this type of thing. I did end up seeing him a few more times on the street that we lived on. There were a lot of bars slash clubs on that street. A Nigerian one right next to our building. I don't think he ever recognized me but we ended up moving apartments because I didn't feel safe there. Luckily, I never saw him after that again. A few years ago, when I, a female, was about 19, I got a job at a hot dog shop with a phallic pun for a name in a somewhat shady area, the shop was pretty well known and had some fantastically dark local lore. Rumors that the hot dogs were made out of horse meat and that the whole operation was a front for something less savory or that we had been closed by the health inspector and reopened illegally circulated. But people kept coming back for our delicious hot dogs. I soon discovered that none of that was even remotely true, but it was fun to gossip, and we'd often give customers ambiguous answers to fuel their wide-eyed morbid curiosities. I got used to the quirky characters that would come by pretty quickly, some older gentlemen rumored to be involved with organized crime, the occasional nightclub owner, tourists, and many homeless and mentally ill people who we would provide food for too. The community was diverse and sometimes dangerous, but people looked after each other. One shift in the early hours of the morning, I was working the register when a man comes in. He has long dark hair and thick stubble covering over the lower half of his face. The shop is busy and he orders, steps to the side, and keeps chatting to me while other people order. I was used to this, in an area with a lot of nightlife, you get pretty comfortable with drunk ramblings, people hitting on you through slurred speech, and I felt okay as long as I was on the other side of the counter. About halfway through, 
after telling me his thoughts about all the other men in the shop being posers. But before he started telling me how beautiful I was, the man tells me that he is a chef at a nearby restaurant. Like I said, people look after each other here, so I was reassured, but I gave him a fake name just to be safe. I started seeing him often. It wasn't uncommon to have regulars, some even on the first name basis. But when my co-workers told me that he had come looking for me, asking after me when I wasn't there, I started to feel a little uneasy. Every time that I saw him, he seemed to be more intoxicated than the last. He would walk in and say, Hey, beautiful. Or, Hi, pretty girl. So casually as though it was really my name. It made me feel sick to my stomach every single time. And one night at 2 a.m., I finished my shift, only to step out onto the sidewalk and see him there, and on the other side of the road, waving at me coyly. I tried not to think about how long he might have been there, watching me through the shop's large neon sign cluttered windows, and my manager walked me to my car that night. Not too long after that, it was a Saturday night, and the shop was pumping. Anyone who has work hospitality knows exactly what I'm talking about. There was a 40-minute wait for french fries. The tiny shop floor was crowded with people who had rolled out of any one of the nearby nightclubs, drug-addled and starving. It was the 3 a.m. rush. A big bulky man in his mid to late 20s started getting in my face. He had ordered fries and have been waiting for 30 minutes. I kept apologizing, but that just made him more mad. I was desperately trying to plan an escape from my position against the back wall and behind the counter to the front door where I could get a club bouncer's attention and have them come over and sort this guy out. But there was no hope. The store was too crowded. But that's when I hear a sloppy but familiar voice saying, Leave her alone. My stalker emerges from the crowd. A mere five foot five, he fronts up against the massive man and they start fighting. Luckily, the commotion did catch the eye of a bouncer who ran in and swiftly de-escalated the situation. Shortly after that, I got a more stable job offer elsewhere, and then I moved on. But to my hot dog shop stalker, thanks, but no thanks. I, a 25-year-old female, have recently moved to a new city which is something a lot of people from my home city are doing. Thus, there is a specific group on Telegram for people from my home city to find some housemates or rental buddies. Ben reached out to me after I posted my expectations in the group, saying that he is interested. He said he wanted to meet up first. I figured that it's a good idea to meet a few times before going house hunting together, so we set up a lunch meeting. During lunch, the only thing that annoyed me is him saying that he hoped that I can lower my budget. I felt like this was a waste of my time, as clearly our expectations weren't compatible. However, things went weird after our lunch. When walking towards the subway station, he kept tabbing on my shoulder occasionally. Although I felt the frequency was weird, I convinced myself that maybe that's just how he is in general. Based on our previous chit-chat, I learned where Ben lives, and he is supposed to get off at Station A and then switch to another line, while I would get off at Station B, which is two stops after Station A, and then I switch lines to another one. Because I'm quite new to the city, I didn't realize that he had not gotten off at Station A until I had to get off myself. He followed me off and then switched lines with me, 
while trying to start different conversations. One stop before the actual station that I live nearby. I told Ben that I had to get off of here to do some shoppings, and then ready to say my goodbye. But Ben followed me off again and went to the grocery store with me. I kept telling him that he could leave and that I was fine shopping by myself. But he insisted to stay. Every time that I turned around in the grocery store, Ben was standing really close to me. Like, if he had boobs, they would be in my face. I felt super uncomfortable and I just grabbed two four little bottled waters and then went to the cashier. And when I was paying, Ben grabbed my water and offered to take those to the Airbnb that I was staying. I tried to decline politely, but he wouldn't hand me back my water, and I didn't want to have my buddy touch with him, so I didn't try to take the water back with force. And I just kind of let him take those water to my Airbnb. My bad, I know. Ben made his way into the common area of my Airbnb. It was a shared house type, and I didn't even invite him in. Then he kept trying to start more and more conversations with me. At several points, it was completely silent, but he still wouldn't leave. And in the end, after hours, I had to ask him to leave. Days afterwards, he still keeps texting me weird messages, which I didn't reply at all. And after that, I just blocked him, and I moved out of the Airbnb, as I didn't want to trigger him, when he still knew where I lived. When I was around 15 years old, I was very active in many Facebook art groups, and I got to meet many people online who were often my age and ended up making a lot of friends. They were never from my city though, not even in my own country. So when I finally found someone from my city, I kinda got excited. This dude told me that he was my age. Well, spoilers, he wasn't. He was at least 18 at that moment. And like the dumb kid that I was, I believed him. We talked for two months, and I think that he seemed chill. At least, until he started to ask for personal info and pictures of me. And let me tell you, I may be an idiot, but I'm not stupid, and I never sent anything. But my Facebook profile didn't have any, but sadly, my mom did have some pics of me, and I tend to stand out because I am very tall and have very recognizable features. Before continuing, I want to address the title of this story. Why Ronald McDonald? Well, he was very, very obsessed with Ronald McDonald. He had pictures of him everywhere and would share mostly old photos of the suit. But at that time, I thought it was just a joke or a weird aesthetic. And since I've always loved creepy photos, I didn't think much of it. At least until he started to show his clear devotion to the clown. He would say things like, Donald was his hero, and he wanted to meet him. Something that wasn't probable, since we don't have a McDonald's in my country. In his mission to get to know me, he asked if I was interested in someone and I said no. Then proceeded to ask me if I wanted to be his girlfriend. I, of course, said no. He kept insisting, so I lied and said that I wasn't interested in anyone because I already had a girlfriend. I'm bi, and I was very open about it online at that time. Well, he quickly switched from be my GF to you're a sinner. And that's when I knew that this dude was religious and homophobic as hell. He even asked me if my dad or any man had done something to me for me to like girls more. And that's where I decided to block him everywhere that I could. He tried to contact me from different accounts, but the way he writes is very distinct, so I blocked them too. He would be everywhere. I would join a group for artists only, and he would pop out out of nowhere. If I left the group, he would leave too. 
I would go to conventions with my cousin, and he would be there. I knew how he looked because he did send me pictures of him. I tried to pass it as a weird coincidence, but he didn't even like anime or anything about the conventions, so it was really weird. This went for a good couple of years, and I somehow managed to avoid a physical encounter every time. I'm guessing he could keep track on me because I was still very active in my city's art community. I never post about personal life or my face, but the times I did say something like, I'm going to this place to help, and then he would be there. Fast forward some years, and I'm attending to an art-related class. One weird dude is my classmate, and I say he's weird because he would ship me with my friend, was also in the class. He would ask very NSFW questions to us like if we were a couple, so I just try to keep distance. One day, the McDonald guy comes to the building. I obviously fast walk to the other side of the building, but apparently, he was looking for the other dude, and of course, they were friends. It seemed that the weird dude would talk about me and my friend with the Donald guy who clearly knew who I was and was still trying to get to me. The classes always ended quite late and I had to wait for my mom to pick me up. I'm very calm and quite strong so I didn't fear being robbed because I had already been in that situation and I know how to deal with it. But the knowledge of the Donald guy knowing where I was three days of the week late at night really gave me chills. I know I don't describe him like a dangerous guy, but he has been keeping an eye on me since 2016. I was still a kid, and I swear to Sky Daddy that I saw him walking on the street one night that my mom was late. And then I ran into a sandwich store that was in the opposite direction because it looked like he was approaching me. I finished the classes and I worked there for a little project, no more than a few days, but guess what? He was there. He didn't enter the building, but I could see him walking outside. Thankfully, those days my boss let me stay inside until my mom arrived so I felt more calm. I see him around the internet from time to time, and I make sure to block him. Well, at least, I'm sure he doesn't know where I live, because I moved recently, so that's a little comforting. So yeah... There's a weird Christian dude obsessed with Ronald McDonald who has been keeping an eye on me for at least five years now. I currently go to a large university in Philadelphia, and my school isn't in the greatest part of the city. I'm a senior now, and I've sort of learned to just keep my head down and most of the people in the area will leave me alone. The one exception that I've had to this was my freshman year. My roommate freshman year was an absolute mad woman, stealing my stuff, threatening to physically assault me, and spreading rumors about me. I generally tried to stay out of my room for the most part to just avoid any interaction with her, until I was able to get a new roommate the next semester. As a result, I spent a lot of my time at the library or at other friends' places. A few weeks into my first semester, I think it was around early October, I was hanging out at a friend's place. He lived on the other side of the campus, probably a 15-minute walk from my dorm room but my path from my room to his dorm never left campus. I had been warned prior to moving into my dorm room that campus was the safest place for students because the locals generally stayed off campus unless they were grabbing food from a food truck. Keeping that in mind, I really didn't mind walking back from my friend's dorm room late at night since the path was well lit and the only people I saw there were other students. Regardless, it was getting late and it was a weeknight, so I told my friend that I was going to head out. He offered to walk me home, but I declined saying that I would be fine, which was my first mistake. 
The walk back was perfectly fine up until I got to a block that my dorm building was on. For context, there was another empty dorm building on the block that I lived on. It was scheduled to be torn down later that year because there was black mold everywhere inside. But at that time, it was still standing and there was absolutely no lights outside of it. There was a courtyard behind the building, which I used as a shortcut, which was my second mistake. As I entered the courtyard, I used my phone as a flashlight to kind of guide my way through the space. And as I was nearing the other end of it, I heard someone call out, Miss! Obviously, my first thought was, Nah, nope. And I just kept walking pretending that I didn't hear anything and I picked up my pace. But the voice called again and said, Wait, miss! At this point, I was nearly out of the courtyard and there was some light coming from the windows of my dorm building so I could kind of see what was going on without completely relying on my flashlight. I turned around to see who had been calling out to me, which was my third mistake, and I was met with a man. He looked so ordinary, except for his oddly wide smile and the fact that he was carrying a rather heavy looking trash bag. Hey, miss, I have something for you. Ah, uh, nah, I'm, I, I think I'm okay. I need to be getting home, I said. No, I think you need to see this. Let me show you. He opened the trash bag and reached his hand in. I didn't know what to expect, so I bolted. I ran further from the courtyard and tore the ramp that led up to my building, thinking that I could outrun him, but I was sorely mistaken. Despite the fact that there was about 10 to 15 feet between us, as soon as I turned, his hand was around my wrist. Miss, I have something for you. I really think you need it. Feeling trapped and unsure what to do, I sighed, defeated. I hoped to God that someone would look out their window and see what was going on, or someone else would be walking back to the building at that late hour and then see us. I wanted to scream, but I was scared that if I drew attention to us, that he would do something that would make me really regret trying to get help. Again, not the greatest part of the city. He smiled at me, like he knew that I wasn't going to try and call out and then let go of my wrist. I didn't realize how tightly he was gripping me until he released it. He took a step back from me and reached back into the trash bag again. My heart was pounding and I wasn't sure what to expect, but it definitely wasn't what he pulled out of the bag. It was a clock. An old digital alarm clock. That thing had to be at least 20 years old and it was encrusted with dirt, like he literally pulled it out of a junkyard. I was stunned at the sight of the yellow and orange plastic. And after I realized that he was actually trying to give me the clock, I thought it might have been a bomb. Here, this is just for you. Oh, um, I really don't need one. I have a clock up in my room. And I said, gesturing toward the massive building behind me. This one's different. What the hell? What's that supposed to mean? Ah, miss. See, this one has a radio. Pretty unique, don't you think? I bet yours doesn't have a radio function. He smiled. I mean, mine didn't, but don't most alarm clocks have radios built into them? I took a step back from him, but as I stepped back, he stepped closer, mirroring my movement. He reached out, presenting the clock to me. I took another step back, and he took another one forward. I knew my back was literally going to be against the wall of the dorm building if I took another two steps back, and I wasn't sure where to go. 
I felt like I had no choice but to go against everything my body was telling me not to do and just accept the clock. I reached out and noticed that where he had grabbed my arm, it was already bruising. With my hand now outstretched, he placed the clock in my hand. I felt so dirty having it in my hand, I don't know how to describe it, but I instantly felt that I just finished rolling around in the dirt. My arm felt like it was throbbing, and the clock was so heavy. It felt like it was getting heavier with every passing second. I knew it just felt like that because I was freaking out, but it didn't make the experience any less terrifying. I didn't know what to do, and the guy was still smiling at me, so I blurted out, Oh, thanks, and I spun around gripping the clock. I took a step away from him toward the ramp leading up to my building, and he took a step back. I decided that this was my chance to bolt for the door. I spun around on my heels and took another few steps, before hearing, Ah, you're so beautiful. I love you, called out behind me. I turned back and the man was out of sight. I screamed, I didn't know what I got myself into, but I didn't want to be any part of it anymore. So I sprinted toward the door to the building, dumping the clock in the trash can outside on the way. And I still thought that there was a decent chance that it was a bomb, and if it was going to explode, I wanted to do so in a contained space. Nothing came of the man or the clock other than the bruise on my arm and it healed completely within a few days. And soon after that, I had sort of forgotten about the incident. I think I just repressed the memories, and I didn't want to unpack what I went through. I still tried to not think about it, and the only reason I'm writing this now is because of my current, not crazy roommate had brought it up a few days ago, and the floodgates of my brain opened and I felt like I needed to share what happened. And here's the riddle for this video. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.